Brr. So, it's another cold day here at Art Explorations for Kids, and it's the perfect time to work on a snowman drawing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on worm's eye perspective for this uh, project that we have going on here. So what I want to do is show you the difference between worm's eye view and bird's eye view. And so let's say we have this guy and he's flying up ahead looking down. He's getting an aerial view. Everything he looks down below is going to be smaller and smaller the farther away it gets. So an easy way to remember that type of perspective, bird's eye view. And then likewise, if you're going to take your worm out for a walk, Hello there. you know, you're going along and he's looking up, what's he going to see? He's going to see everything up in the sky and the trees and as they get higher up, they're going to start to get smaller. Like if you see a plane, you see it down on the ground, it's much bigger. You look up at the sky, it's smaller. So we're going to take this idea, this little guy's perspective, and create a snowman today. So you're going to grab your jumbo jet black pencil and a ruler. And we're going to start off by aligning our ruler in the left-hand corner and coming up about to the center of the top of our paper. Maybe a little less. And you're going to create a point. This point is often referred to as the vanishing point. Now in other lessons we'll go over one point, two point perspective, but right now we're just going to deal with this very simple way of achieving one point perspective to get your worm's eye view look. So we're going to drag the line down and then where that dot is, align that with the right corner, bottom corner of the paper. And draw another line straight down. So now we have a triangle that we're going to work with. You're also going to make sure that if you draw your point off the paper that you have just some extra scrap paper behind it to work with. So now what we're going to do is start adding in our snowman. So we're going to start with the bottom and we're going to create a circular motion just to the edges of this triangle that we've made. This has given us some boundaries to work with. And now we want to draw that second part of our snowman. We're giving him three pieces and draw through that first one and if you want to make his different sections a little bit more circular, you can. I'm making mine a little bit more of a noble. And now his head, way up there up top, and the worm seeing it from a distance so it's smaller. And drawing through, you see right here, that previous circle. And notice I have some areas where I went outside the lines. That's okay. We can go back and erase. And this also gives you the chance to see if there are any changes that you would like to make to the snowman that you've started so far. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and take one of our Tombow markers. I'm going to use blue. And we're going to outline our snowman and for this first one it's just going to be a simple 
outline around the whole thing. All right, now the second one's gonna be a little bit more tricky because we have one snowball stacked on top of the other. Now I told you to draw through so you could see the shape that you were making clearly, but we don't want to highlight this section when we're uh, adding in our marker. So because it's stacked on top, we're gonna start from here and go around. So now you can see that layering. And so now we're just gonna repeat that same technique for the head. And now we're gonna go ahead and add in his features. And I wanna give him two giant eyes, make two big old round eyes, maybe a little carrot nose. And maybe my snowman, I think, is going to have berries for a smile. Maybe yours has coal. Maybe yours has Twizzlers for a smile. And my snowman's also going to have some buttons. And remember, worm's eye view. What we're seeing down here, looking up, is bigger, and as it goes up, it gets smaller. So my buttons up here are smaller, and then closer down here to me and my worm, they get bigger. I also want to give this guy some arms so that he can wave. I'm just going to draw basically a rectangle then a triangle up. Triangle. Triangle. And triangle. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. And do a triangle. Triangle for one finger, triangle for one. And there we go. And now you get to pick out what color you would like the eyes and the buttons. If you gave your snowman maybe some extra clothes or a scarf, uh, now's the time to pick out the colors that you want your snowman to be. And so I have already picked out the colors that I wanted for my snowman and started coloring them in. And as you can see, I've made a few more adjustments. I decided that I wanted his arms to be just a little bit thicker. And probably because he's so out in the cold, I want him to just feel a little warmer. So if you feel like you need to make some adjustments to your snowman, go right ahead. So now that we have our snowman colored in, we're going to go ahead and get rid of these guideline marks that we made in the beginning. Okay, and once you have all those lines erased, it's best not to just blow those extra shavings off onto the table or the floor. And the best way to get rid of these shavings is to just pick up your picture, just kind of wiggle those shavings into the middle a little bit, go to a trash can, and lightly tap them in there. That way there's no mess. 
and you don't have to worry about excess shavings all over your work while you're trying to finish your piece. Now if you see some places you missed, like I have a few little bits here I'm just gently wiping off, you can go back in and get rid of any lines you see that you don't want to be showing. Okay, so now we've got our main outline. We're gonna go ahead and color in our frosty snowman. And I've picked out three colors that I'm going to use. And of course, as always, you do not have to do what I'm doing. And so I'm gonna start by using the Cezanne number 104. And then I'm gonna continue on up with 124 and then for the head, use 105. And remember when you're coloring in each section of your snowman, go in the same direction because if you don't, then he is going to look all over the place. He's gonna look messy. And he's made of compact, round, snow that's smooth and we kind of want to give him that appearance without making it look too chaotic. And you're going to continue using this technique to color in each section of your snowman. And feel free to pause as you finish coloring. And when you come back, I will show you my final uh, rendition of our frosty snowman. And now I have my completed snowman. And you can see he's done in a worm's eye view. And see our little worm coming in here, taking a walk. He's looking up. And he sees the snowman looking down at him. So remember, when you have a worm's eye view, things that are closer to you and you're looking up, they're going to be bigger and decrease in size as they go up. And this also actually gives a tall look, a strong look, and just kind of a momentous statuesque. Um, effect for any of your drawings. So I hope you enjoyed creating the snowy snowman with me. If you're happy with your illustration where it is, you can go ahead and stop right there. If not, then feel free to continue on with me and we'll go on to the advanced portion. So welcome back to the advanced portion. If you're here, you're wanting to add some more details to your uh, worm's eye view snowman project that we had started uh, earlier. And what we're going to do is just add a few more light lines, just some guidelines, with our Jumbo Jet black pencil. And now remember when I mentioned this uh, point up here, this vanishing point, well, we're going to use this to help create some trees also in worm's eye perspective. And using this same point helps us because we're creating uh, uniformity. All of these elements are coming from the same angles. So just lightly draw a line. just from your point to about the mid side of left side of your paper and then rotate it just a little at that same line and then holding that ruler at the point you're going to rotate around a little 
and very gently. You don't need to go through the snowman this time. Go around and finish the line on the other end. So what we've done is we've started the trunk of a tree going up above the snowman's head. It's wider here because we're down here at the worm's eye view and we're looking up at the sky to what's way above us. So we're just going to do this a few more times and you can add these trees where you like taking your vanishing point up at the top and lightly adding in these guidelines, remembering to stay off your drawing of your snowman as best you can. And now we might have some side trees that are bending in and some brush that doesn't go along with the one point perspective. I'm going to add a tree over here. This nature is fun and organic. And this is going to end up being a tree. And then I think I'm going to come in and have a tree standing up right here. And we're just worrying about the tree trunks and we'll look at adding some bushes in just a second. Okay. So since we have our trees set in, we don't have a ground plane yet. So I think I want to go ahead and add a little snowy bush over here and you can come on in front of your snowman because we're going to be using acrylics here in a second. I'm going to add another little snowy bush here. And then maybe some leaves coming off this tree and a branch. You can decide where to put the branches on your trees. And remember, as you go higher up, the branches get smaller. And your branches don't have to have leaves on them. They can be bare, like this one is going to be. Maybe it's just so cold the tree couldn't hold on to those leaves and it's going to be covered in snow. And this one's a little bit bigger because he's a little closer to the top of the snowman's head. And then we have this tree right here. and give him a nice bushy branch. And feel free to follow along with me, but this is you taking your snowman on a trip in the forest. I'm going to add even just a few more bushes back here. So now that I have everything planned out, I'm going to go ahead and start coloring in my I'm going to go ahead and start coloring in my tree trunks first off. And I'm going to make them a little whimsical. I'm going to start by using, I'm going to start off by using metallic gold. Let's start at the top. 
and bring it down. Fill in those branches. You can see I'm using strokes that go in the same direction as my lines. And if you find that on one side of your brush, it starts to dry out, just rotate your brush and use what is on the other side before dipping back in to what you have on your palette. Now, if you have some tiny branches like these here, you can switch over to your round four and get in those little detail areas. You don't have to try to color in with just a single brush. Not one size fits all artwork. And since this is acrylic, you'll want to be careful not to cover up what you've done already. Acrylic is a very thick medium and there's a chance you'll cover up your snowman if you go over the lines. However, if that does happen, you can work around it and make it part of your painting. So now that we have the tree trunks colored in, I'm going to come in uh, maybe with some fun orange, I'm thinking, for the leaves and the bushes, just to give it that extra little pop. And these golds and oranges are really nice complementary colors to go along with all the purples and the blues that we have in here. and clean the brush out, make sure it's nice and clean so we don't contaminate the colors. And I'm gonna do a dabbing technique up here just to give the illusion that these are bushy leaves up here. Remember, be careful working around your snowman So now that you get the idea of this technique that I'm doing, um, I am going to go ahead and let you go on your own. This technique I'm using up here in the branches, we're also going to do down here in the bushes. And don't forget to overlap here and here under the snowman. And we'll check back with you in a, just a few moments. And I've done most of my foliage in these really pretty yellows, golds, and I think really when I'm addressing these front bushes, I want to bring some more of the purples in, and I'm going to take this purple here, our purple lake, and just on our palette mix it with some of that yellow ochre. And I'm not gonna blend it because I just want some of that, that pink, that purple to show through lightly. And then using the same tape technique, make these foreground bushes. And as you can see with my initial lay of this foreground uh, bush element, you can see that heavy dark marker uh, for the bottom part of the snowman still coming through. So what I'm doing is just applying, just in this area, a little bit of a heavier application of the same colors that I've been working with. And just to make sure that 
it blends in well together. So now that we've finished filling in the last bit of our painting, make sure to get all that acrylic out of your brush. Do the clean brush test. So that way you can preserve the life um, and the longevity of your brushes. So now we have this completed one point perspective worm's eye view of a snowman who's looking excited, happy, and who's looking, looking down at our little wormy guy. And remember, a good way to remember worm's eye view, what this guy sees when he looks up, things bigger down at the bottom, smaller at the top, and then bird's eye view, what you might see from a plane looking down, things getting smaller as they're farther away. So I hope you guys play more with this idea and I hope you had a lot of fun with me on this project. Hope you're staying warm and I look forward to seeing you on the next Art Explorations for Kids.